Storm, thank you so much for joining me live. Hey guys, thanks for checking in. I saw some of you are already <laughs> kind of chatting back there. That's awesome. Um, so hopefully you guys can hear me. There's a lot of chitter chatter from some of the, the critters in the forest, some of the cicadas and, and the wind, but I hope you guys can hear me well enough. Let me know, maybe give me a thumbs up or let me know how the audio is. I wanted to share my August secret garden with you guys and I want to tell you the who's who and what's going on back here and give you some great garden tips today. So if you can just kind of check in, let me know where you're viewing this from, uh, maybe the country or the state that you're from, just a general idea. I love to see how you guys uh, are growing around the, the, the globe each, each week. So let's check this out. This is my limelight hydrangea and this one I pruned back in spring, like in the, the beginning of spring. And I usually don't prune back most of my hydrangeas unless they need a recharge, unless they're looking like they haven't been flowering. I usually don't prune them back at all. That's just my thing and it usually works for me. But this limelight hydrangea last year, I noticed wasn't giving me as many blooms as it usually did like in prior years. So I cut back like a third of it in the beginning of spring. And I wanted to show you what happened here. Oh, hey there. Hey, Hugh from Virginia. Nice to see you. Thank you for always showing up. I love um, I love the loyal flower tribe members that always show up. That's amazing. So anyway, I, I wound up giving this guy a pruning of like a third off. But here's what happened. It gave me a ton of blooms this year. I love it. I mean, this is like spectacular. Oh, I just wanted to show you. Uh, Lucy just kind of stepped into the picture here. I know you guys love seeing Lucy. Oh, the audio sounds great. Oh, thank you. So what happened was I got a recharge from this limelight hydrangea. The blooms are incredible. But the thing is that the blooms are so incredible that they are super, super heavy. And then what happens is like we had a torrential rain last night. I'm not sure if you guys had the same thing in your neck of the woods, but we had a ton of rain and it knocked most of these blooms over. So usually they're really tall, like the ones in the background, there's like three tall ones that you know st are still standing. Usually this time of year, all of my hydrangea blooms are standing nice and tall like that. And it's just this giant majestic plant that's you know totally raised up. But now you can see a lot of these are totally like drooped over. And I'm gonna come a little bit closer. I have to walk slow because sometimes my internet connection gets knocked out if I, if I walk too fast, so bear with me here but I do wanna show you like a comparison of like my thumb next to this. Hey, Kimberly from Livingston, Texas. Oh, nice to see you, I'm glad you're here. So here's my thumb and here's the size of this bloom. I mean, I think it's about 18 inches across. I mean, this thing is just tremendous, but you can tell it's so heavy and look at all this rain. Can you tell as I'm kind of shaking it off? Like it's just packed with rain right now and these branches totally drooped over. So it's not a big deal. I mean, it still looks beautiful, but I know a lot of you have asked me for landscaping tips. And so um, if you have like limelight hydrangea that are in the front of your house and they're kind of crashing over and kind of droopy, you might not like that look. So I guess like the quick fix to that is just don't prune them because if you don't prune them, the, the flower heads will still come in, uh, maybe not as much and they might not be that big, but they're gonna stand more upright. So that's kind of like the limelight hydrangea trick. So I probably won't prune this limelight hydrangea back now for the next like three or four years because I got that recharge that I wanted, uh, but these flower heads are just, I mean, they're spectacular. And I can't wait to show you how I make a, uh, dried flower arrangements out of these in fall because I'll wind up getting some giant uh, like containers, some giant beautiful vases and I'll, I'll wind up cutting these guys and putting them in the vases, letting them dry out. They'll be like a green and a maroon color at that point. And then I'll have beautiful arrangements in my house uh, throughout the entire year. And I'll show you how to do that in, in the fall. And I also wanted you guys to know that I made a flower course for you guys. I have three guides. One is uh, how to grow perennial garden, how to, how to grow a perennial garden like this. The other one is how to grow an annual garden for like fresh cut flowers. And the third one is how to create your own fresh cut flower arrangements from the flowers that you grow in your own backyard. And I have um, like a link in descriptions below if you wanna get on my early access uh, email for that because we're gonna be going live with that, I'm hopeful at the end of August. But if you if you snag that email and you kind of just give me your email ahead of time, I'm gonna give you early access and we're gonna give you guys a discount for those of you that actually sign up for, uh, you know, for these guys if you get there early. So I wanted to give you guys like a little bonus for kind of showing up there. So check that out in descriptions below. It says like early access to my 
guides. But so that's my limelight hydrangea and I love limelight. And I just wanted to show you, I've got limelight hydrangeas that are back here. I'm gonna go slow again. The one to the right, like way back there, I'm gonna to try to zoom in a bit more. That limelight hydrangea is about 15 years old. But then there's a little one next to it, to the left. If you can kind of see those little snowballs to the left of it. And that hydrangea is probably about five years old. So a lot of you have asked me things like, you know, my hydrangea is not growing fast enough. My neighbors, limelight hydrangeas are huge and mine aren't. I don't have that many blooms. It takes a long time. So if you put your hydrangea in the ground, it's probably going to take at least a year or two to even start giving you blooms. And, you know, it's going to take like maybe like five or six years to give you like a lot of blooms. But I am telling you guys, it is so worth growing these hydrangeas, especially the limelights, because after like 10 or 15 years, you're going to have these spectacular like 20 or 30 foot uh, plants that give you just like hundreds and hundreds of blooms. And once they get established, they're easy to maintain. So it's one of my number one um, perennials to grow yeah, that I recommend that people grow in their garden. So check that out. But the course that I made you, like the guide uh, that I made you guys, will actually show you how to plant your hydrangeas, how to care for them. So I took like the best of the best tips I have from growing flowers for the past like, you know, oh, I have over a decade experience. And I kind of put them all in these guides to, to make things super easy for you and to help you avoid all the mistakes that I made along the way. So let me tell you some other stuff that's going on here. Um, Oh, Kimberly uh, asked, do you have a guide for pruning? I don't have a guide for pruning, but I'm making three more guides this winter because my, my idea is to have a whole bunch of guides available for all of you to give as gifts for like the gardeners in your life. And Kimberly, I actually think that you just inspired my next guide. So yes, I think I'm going, I don't have it made yet, but I am going to make a hydrangea pruning guide uh, for the flower tribe. So that's awesome. I, I can't thank you enough for that. Thank you. So in front of this limelight hydrangea, I have black eyed Susans. And let me tell you the story with this. This is one of my favorite gardening tips. And this is in the guides. This is like one of the tips that, that you'll find in my guides. I love to plant black eyed Susans as placeholders in my garden because I am super lazy and I hate to weed. And the, the, the logic behind this is that if you have black eyed Susans in your garden in areas where you're just not quite sure what to plant yet, like I, I wasn't quite sure what other perennials that I wanted here yet. So I planted like maybe like 15 black eyed Susans say like maybe five or six years ago and they're profuse self seeders. So those like, you know, 15 plants turned into about 70 plants and they basically planted themselves and every year they just got more and more they just spread out more and more but if you'll notice I don't have weeds in those areas so I don't have to come out here and weed because my black eyed Susans took over that real estate so that's like one of my favorite gardening tips find things that kind of you know are, are self seeders another another couple uh, spots in my garden I'll do this with mint so mint is another like crazy self seeder they just spread out but just be careful with the mint because the mint can actually take over your garden so uh keep an eye on that i mean they really will take over the garden but it's a really great idea if you're a beginner gardener and you have some garden beds you're not quite sure what your favorite flowers are just yet um just put in some black eyed susans or some mint and then you won't have to weed those areas so i love that and here's what the black eyed susans look like close up and another thing about black eyed susans is that uh, they're drought tolerant, so you don't have to worry too much about, you know, like giving them, you know, like huge soakings all the time because usually just Mother Nature's rain is all they need. Uh, they're super, super, super low maintenance. And I wanted to show you who else is back here. This is my peony. So I am crazy about peonies. I have a ton of videos on like peony care. And this was one of my Sarah Bernhardt peonies. But notice how I left these beautiful green leaves in place because I know that this plant needs to continue to feed itself throughout the summer so that I have gorgeous blooms next spring. So sometimes gardeners will make the mistake of um, cutting their peonies back in spring once those blooms are done. But I just leave these gorgeous leaves in place and then they're gonna start to wither away like the end of fall and then I'll just cut them down to the ground. But until then, I'll, what I'll do is I'll leave like two or three inches in, intact because I wanna make sure that I know that my peony is there because another gardening blunder that I've made before is that I cut them all the way down to the ground and then in the spring, I'll wind up like planting something and I don't realize that my peony's there and I'll dig up my peony by accident. So that's just another good little tip uh, to do. So when you're cutting back, you know, your things like peonies, leave like two or three inches in place so that you know there's actually a plant there or better yet, have like a little tag for it. 
So I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but I've got monarch butterflies flying all around me. I know it's hard to capture on this live feed. And the reason why I have that is because I have a ton of milkweed over here. I'm gonna go slow. I don't wanna give you guys vertigo. The little guys that are kinda popping out there. Those are milkweed. I don't wanna walk too far over there because I don't wanna lose this connection, but I planted maybe like two or three things of milkweed in my uh, secret garden here, probably last fall, and I literally have about 50 plants right now. They are another gorgeous self-seeder. Oh, there's the monarch butterfly, but you can kind of see it like 12 o'clock noon in the back of one of those white snowballs. It'll pop up again in a minute. Um, th the monarch butterflies love milkweed because that is their host plant, and they wind up laying their eggs uh, on the underside of the milkweed leaves. And milkweed is gorgeous in the springtime. They have like this really beautiful pink flower. Oh, do you kind of see that monarch there? <laughs> All right, I'm, walk I'm going in, guys. I want you to see this guy. So hopefully the connection stays. Right now, it's like right smack in the middle of, um, the, of the, uh, the screen. Now he's flying around. He's in the back by the crepe myrtle. Okay, he'll, he'll come back. But while we're looking for him, that pink flower back there, that's crepe myrtle. And a lot of you have asked me to give you suggestions for flowering trees that are easy to maintain. Crepe myrtle is one of my number one picks. So they're, they're like, it's almost like a giant wall of flowers for your garden. And crepe myrtle comes in purple and white and magenta and red. And I actually have them all over my garden. I'm gonna try to like do a, uh, like an aerial view here. Cause I've got like, see these, these flower beds that are here? I've got about seven more in back of these guys. And if you could tell way in the back, I've got a pink crepe myrtle to the left and a purple crepe myrtle that's probably about 30 feet tall in the back. So let me try to do a quick zoom in without giving you guys vertigo. Hold on. So there's the purple guy tucked way in the back, but he is tremendous. And then there's the pink guy. Hey, Leisha, thanks for checking in from Connecticut. Okay, so anyway, I have them as like the backdrops of all of my garden. It's like, I'm gonna take you back there one day. I have to get like a better connection, but I just have a, like a giant wall of flowers back there. And that's all because I have a lot of these crepe myrtles planted and they look great in like the front yard. They look great in the backyard. And then uh, right next to me here, I've got a Rosa Sharon. And some of you that watch the channel know that I dug up like, Sheldon and I dug up like 15 or 20 of these plants because they self-propagated. They're another plant that just loves to take over your garden. We had them, they basically took over this entire garden. So we dug them up in the beginning of spring and we transplanted them to another spot on the farm. And now we have a big wall of these rows of Sharons. So here's the story with rows of Sharons. They have magnificent looking blooms, but these blooms do not have a great base life. So they're gorgeous in your garden, but they're not a great fresh cut flower. And so um, in the guides that I made you guys, I actually gave like a bonus video telling you about some of the perennials that I love, even though they're not great fresh cut flower gardens, like they're not great for, you know, for vase life. I give you like extra bonuses in telling you about, you know, not only the perennials that are terrific in a vase, but my favorite perennials that are just beautiful in the garden. So I tried to give you guys as much value as I can in these guides. And once again, you can grab that, um, the link in descriptions below. They're gonna go live pretty soon. Uh, Utah, Karen, you're from Utah. Thank, thanks, Lynn, for checking in from Massachusetts. Thank you, Karen, from Utah. I love seeing where you guys are from. Another thing that I love putting in my gardens are um, like just like structures, like metal structures or um, wooden structures. So right here, I have like this really beautiful, it's like a black wrought iron uh, entranceway. I'm not sure where I got this. Some of you have asked me. I bought it like 15 years ago or 10 years ago. So I'm not sure, but I do love it. But I love, um, you know, like, like, like dramatic features in here. And then I've got some twinkle lights scattered around. So at night, it's really beautiful when this garden is lit up with some of these little twinkle lights that I have uh, scattered around. And I think, I think they're on like a solar panel because there's not electricity back here. And then next to that, I've got a lot of day lilies. I love day lilies because they are super easy to grow. They're drought tolerant. They're these little yellow guys here. Uh, once again, they don't have a great base life, but they are beautiful in the garden. Oh, there's the monarch. I knew we'd see her. I'm like obsessed with monarchs. Anybody else obsessed with butterflies? Let me know. I know Sherry Jopp, who's one of my Instagram um, friends. I see her all the time. She's always, you know, giving great comments on uh, keeping butterflies. And so I just love them. I know she's obsessed like me. 
There's that crepe myrtle tree kind of drooping over. That's the pink one. And here's another, I have another limelight hydrangea there in the back, another limelight hydrangea there. And let's see what else. Okay, so who else is over here that I can show you? Oh, there's the monarch, hold on. <laughs> I know this is like crazy. I'm coming in. Oh no, she's all the way over there. Okay. I'm, once again, I'm, I'm too afraid to go over there because I don't want to lose you guys. She'll come over here. I'm going to give you a little peek through the garden here and kind of show you. Okay. We're, oh, so um, Rich, you're from Ontario, Canada. I'm, I'm in uh, Cranberry, New Jersey. I'm glad that you asked that. I'm sorry. I should have um, introduced myself better before, guys. So my name is Kelly Lehman. I have a flower farm here in Cranberry, New Jersey. And uh, I love giving you guys uh, fun, free flower tips each week. So if you haven't just, uh, subscribed to this channel yet, please do so. Because I try to give you guys as much um, of my gardening knowledge as I can. Because I know that it was really hard to find all this information about how to garden, the best flowers to garden. And it took me forever. Like I was like going through like hours hours and hours and hours of YouTube videos and, and flower books. And it just, it took me forever to learn how to grow the most beautiful flowers. And so I try to give you guys all the tips and the tricks that I've learned through my garden YouTube videos and through these online guides, because I want to save you guys a lot of time, energy, and money, because I know that I spent a lot of time, energy, and money learning all these tricks. So who else is here? I've got some lights in here also. So this is like just another little light. And I love to sprinkle little lights throughout my garden because it just looks amazing at night. And it's so fun to have like friends out here to have like wine and cheese and they're kind of walking through your garden and there's lights and twinkle lights. And it's just like a little Disneyland, you know, for adults. And, um, oh, Robin, hey, for, thanks for checking in from Alabama. And um, let me think what else. Oh, guys, over here, as far as the milkweed, I also have a butterfly bush in the back of it which is kind of like that purpley guy. I'm not sure if you can see it. It's to the right of that pink crepe myrtle. But I've got, so the honeybees, we've got hummingbirds, we've got hummingbird moths. And if you have kids or grandkids, it's a great idea to put in things like milkweed, butterfly bushes. I've got some echinacea tucked in the back there things that uh, pollinators are attracted to because it's so fun to come out to the garden with kids and your grandkids and just watch them. Like I literally, I'll sit out here for like hours just like watching them. And like a lot of times at night, Sheldon and I will come outside, we'll walk the garden and we're just like amazed at all these like bees and, and uh, you know, the butterflies. And there's actually this giant bumblebee I'm going to try to catch right now. Oh, he just landed right inside this flower. Hold on. But like, that's amazing to me. Did you just see that guy? Like I am absolutely fascinated by the pollinators. And um, so yeah, so that's what the garden looks like now. I'm gonna try to do a pull away. I hope that I don't blow my connection. The white flower, oh, okay, so Karen asked, what are the white flowering bushes on the snowball trees? Okay, so, so here's the thing. These guys here are limelight hydrangeas, but and back of them, I've got giant, giant, giant rows of what's called pinky winky. And right now they look white. So they're the, the white flowers that are to the very left over here. I'm gonna to try to focus in more. Those white flowers, they have like, you know, they're a little bit smaller, they're cones. They're gonna turn pink in about two to three weeks. And it's gonna be this giant shot of like pink and red color in the back of my garden. So pinky winky hydrangea, those are the ones that are in the middle right now of the screen. And the limelight hydrangeas are the ones that are to the right. And then, oh, this is kind of cool too. I wanted to show you, I love growing uh, grasses because grasses are usually super easy to maintain and they spread out. I've got like this really beautiful, like a variegated grass all the way to the left over here. It's kind of spilling over. And I love grasses because as they get really overgrown, they're super easy to like dig out of the ground in like early spring while they're still kind of dormant. Like what I'll do is I'll kind of cut these guys back, you know, once the end of the season is here, we'll kind of just take like, um, you know, like we'll just kind of cut it way back and then we'll just lift it out of the ground and we'll quarter it. We'll take like a really sharp, edge shovel and we'll break it into like four different pieces. You know, we'll dig down really deep to get all the root system. And then I'll transplant some of those sections of grasses into different parts of my garden. And that's why my garden keeps growing because we keep taking plants and listen, plants love to propagate. They love to like, you know, create more of themselves. And so what we do is we take that opportunity and then we just expand the garden with that. So um, maybe on that propagation guide, I'm gonna make you 
I'll actually show you how to actually also transplant the plants that have already propagated. And speaking of like amazing uh, self-propagating plants, I've got a load of Annabelle hydrangeas in the back and those are profuse self-propagators. So I put maybe, I don't know, I probably had about 10 or 12 of these plants a couple years back and now I've got about 30 of them and they stretch out. I've got a ton of um, garden care videos on how to take care of these Annabelle hydrangeas. And what I wanted to show you was in back of them, I've got a ton of peonies. So when you're planning out your gardens, it's a good idea to think about the different seasons and to really maximize your, uh, like the real estate here. So I know that my peonies are the first to bloom. So against this fence, I'll have a huge burst of peony color in the beginning of spring. And then the peonies kind of fade away and then my Annabelles take over. So they're spaced out really far. Believe it or not, this peony over here is spaced out at least four or five, uh, about four feet from that original Annabelle hydrangea. So there's a lot of airflow going on there. You don't want to cram them in, but know that you can, you know, have like a, a, like a consistent color in your garden if you just figure out which plants bloom when. And those guides that I kind of made you also will help you with that. Like I'll tell you what to plant in spring and then, you know, which, which flowers come up in spring, which flowers come up in summer, uh, which ones are best for fall. And then the idea is to just have a continual burst of color and I'm really excited because Proven Winners sent me a ton of Incredible Hydrangeas and Incredible Hydrangeas basically will give you those giant flower heads that the Annabelles do but they have sturdier stems so I just put these in the ground this year I mean they're brand new they're baby plants and here's the thing I'm not going to have giant blooms from them the first year or two but that's okay because I know that they're going to grow really really fast and probably by like year three I'm going to have tremendous flower heads and um, from what I've seen on all like the garden blogs and all the garden channels everybody seems to love Incredible so Proven Winners was amazing uh, they just sent me them over now so I'll keep you posted on those but they're supposed to have super super sturdy stems and these are the gals that come in on um, fresh growth each spring and that's the same thing with Annabelle's and that's the same thing with the limelight which means you don't have to worry about pruning them uh, wrong at the wrong time of year so endless summer and Nico those purple and blue hydrangeas um, if you don't know anything about pruning hydrangeas just my, my best advice is don't prune them back at all until you know the story because if you prune back those purple and blue hydrangeas now you're probably going to wind up cutting off next year's blooms so I've got a whole bunch of videos on on this channel uh, telling you about that. So check out some of my uh, pruning videos there about hydrangeas or like how to get more blooms from your hydrangea. And here's another um, proven winners. This is called Pugster Blue. This is a dwarf butterfly bush. So a lot of you have bought new homes this year. Congratulations. Some of the homes are bigger. Some of them are smaller. But a lot of you have asked me to give you advice for um, landscaping in smaller areas. So a lot of times I'll say, you know, use some dwarf plants, just like that dwarf butterfly bush from Proven Winters. So that's, you know, it's only going to grow to be about two feet. So you can always do some dwarf plantings. So here's just like a side view of the garden here. And I want you guys to know that this garden took me like 15 years to put together. So sometimes people walk, will walk out and they'll be like, oh, you, you know, you're so lucky you have a pretty garden. And I'm just like, this thing took forever. And I agonized. And like I said, I spent so much money and wasted so much money planting the wrong things here, um, planting hard to grow plants until I figured out I will only put in plants in this garden that are low maintenance, that once they're established, I don't really have to worry about them. I don't have to think about them. I don't have to over fertilize them. So all these guys pretty much are self-sufficient at this point. So they've gotten established and I don't even have a sprinkler system back here right now. So most of the plants that are back here are also drought tolerant. And so that's just another thing that makes my life easy. Like I need low maintenance because not only do we have the secret garden, but we've got an entire flower farm that we're taking care of. And you know, we're doing, we have like a, a full blown florist that we work out of my barns and we're doing the whole garden influencer thing on TikTok and you know, YouTube and Instagram. So please join us on all, on all those channels too. And in Pinterest, we're, we're getting pretty big on Pinterest, but you know, listen, there's only so many hours in the day. So I have to make sure that anything that grows in this secret garden is basically good to go without me futzing over it. And we also have four kids. I have to say, but my youngest just went off to college. So we're a little bit heartbroken this, this week, but yeah, so there was a lot going on here. <laughs> there was a lot going on here at the farm and um, low maintenance was just the way to go for me. So if you want to check out those guides, I really kind of walk you through the, the easiest 
ways to maintain flowers that give you the most beauty. And I guess that's it. So guys, oh, thank you. Thank you guys for the, you love my beautiful garden. Let me take a couple questions from you guys before we go today. I really appreciate you guys showing up. And um, I want to thank, we had another anonymous uh, viewer that bought me a cup of coffee. You guys are always welcome to buy me a cup of coffee. I've got a little supporters page. Uh, that's at the bottom of the descriptions too. So if you're liking my tips, you can always buy me a cup of coffee. Totally up to you. Don't feel obligated. I'm going to keep bringing you these tips either way. So let me try to take some of your uh, flower questions. And please make sure that you join us over on my Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe Facebook page because we have a group and they're from all over the world and they're asking and answering amazing garden questions over there because I can't always get to all of your garden questions each week here in comments. Um, and the ones that I don't get to, if you post them on Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe Facebook group, chances are someone from somewhere around the world will wind up uh, posting uh, posting like an answer to that. But in the meantime, you can give me your questions below and I'll try to get to them. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I just missed all the, the things that popped up here. Whoops. Hold on. How old is your pinky winky? You planted a hedge last year. Uh, this is from my timeless home. Okay, so the pinky winky that I have back here is probably about 10 years old. And that bush back there, it's like right center of the screen right now, must be, I don't know, I'm saying about 15 feet at least. Oh, thank you, B. Um, you're from Georgia. Do you have a list of, of low maintenance plants? Um, er everything you see here is low maintenance. And I do, like when I, if you, if you want to take a look at that guide, it, go, it walks you through everything. But let me just give you the short list right now. So some of my favorite low maintenance plants are this limelight hydrangea. Black-eyed Susans, but I do have to tell you, black-eyed Susans don't have a great, I don't love them in the vase because some people call them a dirty water plant because sometimes the stems make the plants kind of mucky, but I do love them for the garden. They're low maintenance. So it would be limelight hydrangea, uh, black-eyed Susans. And once again, all these plants that I'm telling you right now are low maintenance. And once they're established, they should come back in your garden every year. Peonies. And my favorite peonies are um, Sarah Bernhardt. And then... I would say Rose of Sharon, which is like that purpley guy right here that I said doesn't have the great base life. And it, you know, just is like a profuse, you know, just keeps coming back in the garden over and over again. Uh, endless summer hydrangea, definite must have in your garden, but remember, don't prune them back at the wrong time. Do not prune them back this time of year because you won't uh, have any blooms next year. I would definitely plant Annabelle hydrangea. These guys are gonna be white in the spring and they're going to turn green this time of year. And this bloom right now is going to be an amazing um, dried flower. So I, I make colossal dried flower arrangements from my Annabelles too, my Annabelles and my Limelights. And then they last all year. And then I give them a shot of floral spray paint uh, when the colors start to fade and it looks brand new. And guys, uh, all these like little tools and like the spray paint I just told you about, I will always have a link to my Kelly Lehman Amazon shop page in descriptions below. And you can always like shop for fun uh, florist tools there and some of the plants that you see here. And a lot of these plants are actually on that site also. So you could check that out in descriptions below. And I would also recommend Incredible because that's going to wind up being giant uh, like these guys. So Incredible hydrangea from proven winners butterfly bushes are a must-have in your garden um, right now like i said this guy i have to get him in the ground but it's basically it looks kind of like this once it's established and if you have a smaller property then get the dwarf sizes and if you have a larger property you can just get like a regular butterfly bush because that brings me loads of happiness and i have to say that one of the flower tribe members gave me a great tip they said, you know, make sure that you continue to deadhead your um, butterfly bush because it will give you blooms all the way through the frost. And I didn't know that, oh, here's a monarch butterfly coming in for a landing. You guys see that? I am literally surrounded by monarch butterflies all day long, I think because of that cutting garden. So I think we went over most of the plants that are here. I'm trying to think who else I can tell you about that I love, that's low maintenance. The day lilies that I showed you before, those were the guys that are to the right of this, that's a super perennial. They're on the, they're to the right of this, you know, like black wrought iron trellis. Those are super beautiful. And um, I think that's like one of my, probably like, oh, here's a monarch. I'm gonna go in here. Oh, he left. Oh, now he's right next to me. All right, so I guess that's it. Let me see if there's any more questions. 
Uh, anybody else have a question? I know you, a whole bunch of questions popped up, but sometimes when I'm talking, I can't read and talk at the same time. Okay, so Seattle. Hello from Seattle. Looking to grow my own flowers, greens and fillers for my uh, private florist. Oh, okay. So I think I got, I think I got the gist of your question before it like disappeared. I'm, I'm going to try to get it to come back. If you're asking about greens and fillers for your um, arrangements that you're making, I would love to walk you back here because I have something called the variegated, I'm going to say this wrong, Wygela. I used to call it Wigalia, and then I realized that I had been saying it wrong all these years. So it's, um, it's variegated Wygela, and it's absolutely magnificent for filler flowers. And you know what? There's no way I'm going to get back there without losing connection. Google it. So it's, I'm going to try to spell it for you. I think it's W-E-G-E-I-G-A-L-A, Wigalia. Anyway, the variegated variety is outstanding for greens. I've got them all over the farm. I think I've got like 10 of them right now. And they're just magnificent. And the one that I have has pink flowers that come out in spring, but they don't have a great base life. But the greens... The green leaves are like striking. They're actually prettier than some of the flowers. And in this flower guide, um, I also, you know, tell you how to grow the best greens to put in your flower arrangements also. So uh, variegated Wygela, even though I used to call it Wigalia, is a great one. Believe it or not, I use lilac leaves for fillers. Now, you got to make sure that if you're using lilac leaves for your fillers, that you don't cut them too late into spring. Otherwise, you're going to cut off next year's lilac flowers because they also set their blooms in place early just like the uh, endless summer but they make for magnificent um, filler greens i love them because i'm really not into ferns i'm not into the traditional stuff and lemon leaf a lot of times i'll use lemon leaf as my fillers for our for, you know with our florist so those are awesome oh you know what else is a really really good filler is these rows of sharons so these rows of sharons since they you know self-propagate and they're all over my garden the greens on them have a really nice vase life so sometimes i'm just trying to prune them out of my garden because they take over and i'll just use these as some of the greens inside of some of the the bouquets that we ship out because we ship our bouquets na nationwide um but right now we're not shipping for a while because we have a lot of brand deals that we're working on. So we're kind of holding back on the bouquets for a while because we got super busy with some companies. And um, yeah, so that's, that's the story. I'll take one last question, guys, before we go. Thank you all of you for showing up. I love seeing you all here. It's so fun. Anybody else have any quick questions? And like I said, guys, you can grab um, that link to my guides that are coming out live in about a week or two. If you get the early access link, you're going to get a discount because we're going to shoot you. We're going to shoot you guys who have early access an email two or three days prior to when the course actually goes live. And you're going to wind up getting the course for a discount if you sign up. So, Susie, you have a new hedge of Zinfandel. Ah, somehow I don't know how to make my comments stay. So like they pop up and as I'm reading them, hmm, let me see. Okay, I have a Luna hibiscus. Is it a nice kind? Um, I don't know. I, ha I have to say, I don't know about Luna hibiscus. Flower Tribe, anybody, uh, anybody have any comments on Luna hibiscus? I do love hibiscus though. They're amazing. They're beautiful, beautiful flowers. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for joining Lucy and me today. And um, I will see you next Thursday at 1030 a.m. I try to go live every Thursday. And please check out some of those links below. I would love to see you uh, have early access to some of those guides I have. I would love to give you that discount. So just check that out in, in descriptions below. And Kimberly, are the white wedding hydrangeas the same as Annabelle hydrangeas? I'm not sure. That's a great question. I don't think they are but I could be wrong, but I think it's a different variety. Um, does anybody know the answer to that? You know what? Ask the Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe Facebook group. They might know. Oh, you're very welcome, Karen. Uh, I appreciate that. Guys, if you liked my video, please do me a favor, give it a thumbs up. And if you can, uh, write a comment in comments below because that helps me. It helps with my YouTube algorithm and it just kind of helps me stay live here that I can spend more time on YouTube, uh, giving you guys more tips uh, because it just helps out my YouTube channel. And I love being here with you guys. So, okay, I'll see you guys in the next video. And please take a look at some of those links below. And I'd love to see you on those guides. And um, have a great day. Oh, come say hi to us over on TikTok. I have a new channel. It's called um, Kelly. I think it's called Kelly Lehman's Flowers on TikTok. And I'm giving you like really short, fun tips over on TikTok. And then on Instagram, I have a Cranberry Fields Instagram channel.
And so that's the story. Uh, all right. Oh, so B says white wedding hydrangea is not the same as Annabelle. Oh, I love the flower tribe. You guys know so much more than me. I love that. Thank you, B. Appreciate that. All right, flower tribe. I'll see you next week, 1030. You're welcome, Kimberly. Thank you, B. All right, guys. I'll see you later. Thanks for showing up.